Twin Peaks time on the International Space Station. The time Ed Sheeran's Shape of You spent at UK's number one. The last series of Strictly Come Dancing. Numbers on Neymar Jr.'s monthly paycheck. Arsene Wenger's zipper. Of all things longer than Frank DeBoer's 77 day tenure. Joey Barnes stint inside. No, I think eh? you'll find that was exactly 77 days, dude. Okay, good point. Uh, I think this intro is in danger of joining those ranks if we're not careful, so uh, welcome, welcome to Studs, Studs Up. up. Frank de Boer, Crystal Palace manager, sacked just four games into the new Premier League season. That's the shortest managerial tenure in Premier League history, but I'm sure Palace fans will be delighted that Roy Hudson's come to save the day. No! Right, speaking of de Boer, I've got a quick-fire quiz for you, Johnny. Go on, then. Fastest goal ever scored in Premier League history? Cristiano Ronaldo. Nope, Ledley King Great. in just ten seconds. Fastest booking? Uh, Paolo Di Canio. Nope, Vinnie Jones, five seconds. I get it over with. And the earliest that a Premier League title's ever been won? Arsenal 2. Arsenal 2? Nope. Obviously Arsenal 2. Nope. Man United 01 with five games to spare. Ah, lovely. Well, enough of my rubbish football and knowledge been exposed to the entire universe. Uh, let's see what's going on in the rest of the show. You did well. No, I didn't. Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson. You're right. Good start. Solid yes. start. Question 2. Lots to look forward to there and plenty to look forward to next week as we'll be coming to you live from the launch of FIFA 18. Here's a quick taster of what you can expect. early on, so I know really excited and really happy with what we're seeing. Real Madrid, that is my go-to team. I played with Man United on here, which they're all right, they're not too bad. Rashford, he's pretty fake, but my go-to team would probably be Real Madrid. We'll be showing some love to the London derby this week very soon. But first, Layla, yes. I want to talk about the wider footballing world, okay. if I may. In particular, strikers. Uh -huh. So we had years of the BBC at Real Madrid. We've had MSN at Barcelona and now PSG, the latest team to assemble this superstar forward lineup. But what I want to know is what do we call them? OK, so you've got Cavani, mm -hmm. Neymar and Mbappe, CNM, Cav... It's a trick question, Layla. It's a trick question. I've already worked it out. Okay. NME. 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 Because they rock. We've seen all three of NME. It's score. catching on. It's catching on. <laughs> Last weekend. Right. Do you think they have the firepower to conquer Europe? No. What? No. Don't Tell look me. at me like that. No. No, they don't. Okay. Three incredible strikers, one of which proven world beater in Neymar. They're going to flatter themselves in the league where they are and in the early stages of the Champions League. They're going to run people over, but later on, you know, you need more than just a forward line. What you're saying, Neymar can't shine in he's, international He's going to shine. He's going to knock a few goals in. Thank but, you. like, look at Juventus in the final last year. They were all defence and it wasn't enough. This is not Fine. enough. That's his opinion, but we want to know yours. Do you agree? Let us know in our latest poll. Who do you think is the best strike force in Europe? Of course you agree. Well, I can hear them agreeing from distance. You are often wrong. Not once yet. For PSG, use the angry emoji. For Real Madrid, use the shocked emoji. For Barcelona, it's the crying emoji. And finally, for Manchester City, use the laughing emoji. Man City's forward line feature heavily in this week's Pressure Index review. It's powered by Optia and brought to you by Goal and Shaw. Take a look. Let's rock! 
joined now at the Jam Tree by Nizar Kinsella, Goals Chelsea correspondent. We will be talking about the Blues shortly, but first let's take a look back at last weekend. Man City's humiliation of Liverpool. How much can we read into that? I think that City look amazing. Um, you know, they've spent so much, over 200 million, and they've just improved so much. Mm. Uh, they've, I think they've gone to a new level. Pep Guardiola's got what he wanted. Those wing backs, that attacking sort of formation, those the way they interchange and move in sort of triangles. It's exactly what Pep Guardiola dreamed of. It was, yeah. It was. It's an imperious uh, performance by them. But for me, it wasn't completely different to what we saw early mm. last season. They, they scored a lot of goals. Yeah. Uh, is, to what is it? Sane coming through or Jesus uh, scoring goals at the same time as a well, that's the exciting thing for you or what? I think the fullbacks have sort of unlocked the potential of the attacking players. Um, I just think obviously they already had so much going forward, but they've added, you know, Bernardo Silva coming off the bench. There's just too much talent almost. There's just so much creativity in that team. On the other yeah. side of Manchester, Man United at the top of the table only just after a two all draw against Stoke. Solid performance from them in your account? Uh, most disappointing performance of the season for them, mm. but uh, yeah, 2 2 away to Stokes, not so bad. You know, Lukaku scored again, but the defence uh, was a, a cause for concern. September has arrived, and as all yes. Tottenham fans know, that means get your coats on. Harry Kane's worked out with the netting, he's going to rain some goals down. Is this their problems over? Is a worry for Chelsea this year? Well, um, I think they've got a chance. They've got an outside chance. They're always outsiders, they never spend enough, and uh, they, you know, they, they kind of have a very purist way. Uh, bringing young English talent through. Um, but yeah, they're getting a year older, they've got a year's more experience, they've got to an FA Cup semi-final, they finished second. Not too bad, I mean, they'll be the butt of jokes for not winning trophies and that's something they need to address. We've got to talk about Chelsea actually playing yeah. Arsenal this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arsenal haven't had the greatest starts to the season, but you know, this weekend was a pretty positive time for them. Are they still underneath Tottenham for you? Just about, yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I don't want to heap more problems on Arsenal fans, I feel sorry for them in a way. Um, it's never easy, but you know, I, I worry about Alexis Sanchez. He's their key player, and uh, you know the contract situation, the mm. transfer mm. situation with Man City. Um, How is that going to affect him? I think it's going to affect him badly, in my opinion. Um, and you know, over the course of the season, you need a player like that. So that was the big news of last weekend. We're going to be talking about Chelsea in a moment, but first, the worst of the week. The worst of the week this week has to be Crystal Palace and Steve Parrish. How are you going to sack Frank Labour after 77 days in charge as manager? Four league games, just how are you gonna do it? I know they lost all four games, I know they didn't score a goal, but when you appointed Frank Labour, surely you knew he needed more time than that. Surely Steve Parrish, surely Crystal Palace, you knew they needed more time than that. And then what do you do? You sack him and you bring in Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson, Roy Hodgson. His last game was England against Iceland. Imagine that, the manager that got England knocked out against Iceland. Roy Hodgson still having flashbacks of that and you've appointed him the oldest manager in Premier League history. Just what are you doing? The way you're going on, you deserve to get relegated. And if I was a Crystal Palace fan, I would be prepared for the worst. Roy Hodgson. So now let's talk Chelsea. Diego Costa named in the squad, but are we likely to even see him? Well, we've not seen him yet. He's still in Legato, Brazil, so <laughs> that's an issue, number one. Uh, number two, there's uh, legal proceedings going on between club and player, which is a big issue. Even though he scored 20 goals a season for the last three seasons, he's been a key player for Chelsea, but it, the relationship has completely broken down between the manager, the player, the club. Um, I, it's, it's a shame because I think he's a fantastic player as well. So um, I don't think it's likely. Something may change, but for me, he's, his destination is Madrid. He's I, casting, he's casting quite a shadow over the club at the moment. Morata's mm. come in mm. as his natural replacement. Is he doing enough for the fans, do you think, to kind of banish the, the demons of uh, Costa at the moment? I think the fans absolutely love Morata. He's been class, hasn't he? That the, He scored two identical goals against Everton and Leicester. That, it's just unbelievable in the air. He scored three goals with his head, uh, two assists with his head, so he's done it all with his head so far. Um, Eden Hazard's challenged him to score with his foot, so we might see that against Arsenal, um, hopefully. But uh, yeah, he's been he's been absolutely fantastic. He's only 24 years old, so he can improve on what he's done. A lot of fans are happy to see how he's playing. No more so than Fabregas at 
at the yes. moment. Now, Chelsea have sort of struggled mm. to get the best out of him in the past. He's come on, done really well, and then he's been on the bench for the next two games. Mm. Do you think Morata and Fabregas are a sort of natural pairing? Can we see them more often? I think it's almost like Spain FC. Um, <laughs> it's not just Fabregas and Morata with, uh, obviously, Aspilicueta and Alonso as well. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think it's been good for Fabregas to have that ball to hit because, you know, he's, been a, he's, a, he's an outlet. He, you can hit him aerially. He's quite quick, actually, which is something that surprised me about him, um, Alvaro Morata. He, he's, he can get behind the defence. Um, I think Fabregas has got the quality to deliver the sorts of balls he needs. We're a stone throw away from Stamford Bridge at the moment. You take on Arsenal this weekend. Mm. Are they going to cause you any problems as far as you're aware? I think they're going to be the underdogs in that game. Um, it's going to be tough. They could, obviously, Arsenal have a lot of quality and they could find a plan on the day. They beat them in the final, the FA Cup mm. final. Um, I was there and I was shocked by how much commitment there was in the Arsenal team, but we've seen a bit of a lack of commitment this season in, in most of the games. But you know they they won two 0 last weekend, so uh, maybe there's a maybe there's a slight bit of hope for him. But Chelsea are favourites, and maybe even Eden Hazard will finally start a Premier League game and uh, show what he can do. You remember that goal he scored at Stamford Bridge last season, mm. dribbling through the defence, yeah. it, it was sensational. Um, I think Arsenal will be quite scared of him. So you say you think Arsenal might be quite scared, but let's have a look at the stats ahead of the London derby in this week's Pressure Index preview. Naz, mate, how are you feeling right now? Confident, strong. Good, glad to hear it because it's time for our footballing quiz. It's called The Six Pointer and it's brought to you by Virgin Media. Time now for our quiz. We've got five questions. And a bonus question. A bonus question, of course, means you get to double your money. There's no money involved, it's just your score, but only four to beat sits at the top. Naz, you're feeling confident, mate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cracking. Let's begin. Question number one. Approximately how many people have been born since Crystal Palace last scored a Premier League goal? Is it 4 million, 44 million or 4 billion? 44 million. You're right. Good start. Solid yes. start. Question two. What was Stokes' Eric Chupamoting responsible for versus Manchester United? Was he responsible for... The 24th time a player with a hyphen in his name has scored two or more goals in the EPL. Wordy. Or the first Cameroonian to score versus United. Uh, I'll go with A. The 24th time a player with a hyphen in his name has scored two or more goals in the EPL. That's correct. Yes. He's getting the gist of this, isn't he? Question number three. Who scored more Premier League goals? Is it Eric Cantona and Andrei Shevchenko combined or Harry Kane? Um, I'll go with Harry Kane. Do you want to have a guess at the number of goals? 101. 80 goals, Harry Kane. Cantona uh, and Shevchenko together scored 79. So close, but you're right. Yes. He's on three. He's on three. You, you, you won away from sitting on top of the leaderboard. Incredible. Okay, question four. 
Gareth Barry could become the first ever player to make 600 Premier League starts this weekend. Has he made more starts, though, for Aston Villa or Everton and Man City combined? Um, I'll go with Aston Villa. Has it a guess? I'm sticking with it. OK. You're correct! Yes. You're actually correct! 353 yes. appearances for Villa compared to Everton and City's 243. You're on four points already. It's a shame you there's are... no money involved. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, just to clarify, there's no money involved. <laughs> you are on par with our leaderboard now. They get this next question right, you hit the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Question number five. Who's lost more games? Everton against Man United in the Premier League or Man United in the Premier League since Sir Alex Ferguson retired? I'll go with B. B being what was B since since uh, Man United since Sir Alex Ferguson retired and you're absolutely right oh my absolutely God. right top the leader Man United since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson's retirement lost 35 games yeah. now mate Boy. you're already it's sitting already at the top you're already sitting at the top you're on five points after how many shows we've like uh, six shows or something yeah. wow whatever who's counting anymore <laughs> they're all quality you uh, you're sitting on top of the leaderboard but if you get this bonus question right you end on ten which is our maximum number of points. Forming a so. massive gap between everyone else. So answer me this. Riddle me this. Nice. Which film was top of the UK box office the last time Arsenal kept an EPL clean sheet away at Chelsea? Last time Arsenal got a clean sheet in the Premier League away at Chelsea, what was top of the UK box office? We want to hear your workings out. And I'll give you, you know, I'm, I'm, there's multiple choices. Yeah. <laughs> That's just really hard. Okay. <laughs> Is it A, Madagascar? The one with the lion. Is it? Well, there's a lot of different animals in that film, really. <laughs> the lion was the uh, Is it B, Batman Begins? The one with the Batman. There's definitely a Batman in that. That's the first one. Or is it C, The Interpreter? I don't know that one. Uh, I think Nicole Kidman was in it. Let's go Batman. Batman? You go back on against. Yeah. Any reason why, or just? It's a, it's, it's a pure guess, this one. <laughs> yeah, like all the other ones, you, you knew the answer already. <laughs> the answer is C, it's the interpreter. Who would have thought oh. it? It's easily the worst film out of those, out of those <laughs> three, but like, uh, that's just my humble opinion. <laughs> Unfortunately, you, you're not getting 10 points. But you remain at five points, which is currently top of our leaderboard. Well done, Nat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Shake a hand, you. lovely, lovely. It's like the end of a game. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nizar Kinsler. I've been Leila Annalee. That was Johnny Nelson, and you've been watching Studs Up. We'll be back next week at the launch of FIFA 18. We'll see you there. Goodbye. See you later.